you should be trying to optimize your pre-training data to make post-training processes more effective. Uh -huh. So you should try to figure out how do I optimize my pre-training data so that the slope of the test time compute curve or so that the slope of the RL curve is as steep as you possibly can be. Um, or alternatively, how do I optimize my pre-training data so that the slope of the jailbreaking curve is as shallow as possible, right? Like fundamentally, I think alignment in post-training doesn't really make sense as a, as a long-term solution. If you can easily align a model through post-training, you can easily misalign a model through post-training. If it's easy to put it in, it's easy to take it out. If it's really hard to put it in, it's really hard to take it out. That's just like a truism of models, mm -hmm. right? So if, if you do alignment during pre-training, you'll actually end up with models that are, I think, largely impossible to misalign without putting a massive amount of data into them. Um, I think there are a lot of benefits to that. Um, and I think we've also seen evidence for this, like looking at the difference between Llama and Quen with respect to their ability to be post-trained, right? It's much easier to RL Quen right. yeah. than it is to do Llama. Likely that has to do with the fact that Quen put a lot of synthetic reasoning traces uh, into their training data. Even with wrong examples. Yeah, but even with wrong examples, <laughs> that's where that's, it's still <laughs> going there, um, which is wild, right? Um, but I think that pretty clearly shows that it's the base model that's doing it. It's not the rewards you're giving. If, if you give random rewards and the model's still learns, it's probably not the reward signal <laughs> that's doing it.